Well, hello everyone, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we're going to be using some pattern blocks to help us find some missing angle measures. We're in our home links, uh, Unit 8, Lesson 3, Finding Pattern Block Measures. It's on page 225. And uh, as you can see, I've got some of these rhombus and triangle and uh, larger blue rhombuses uh, blocks at my disposal, but you don't necessarily need them to uh, do any of the work here in this uh, in this home links but it's nice to have okay so as you can see this white colored rhombus fills in the space in my home link exactly it's almost like they designed it that way and as you can see the acute angle parts of my rhombus are at three degrees now in question number one it says Molly fills an angle of the green triangle seen here uh, with the small angles of the white rhombuses what is the measure of the triangles angle and explain how you know okay, so when I put those there you can see that they fill up the same space in this corner this this vertex as if I put in this green triangle okay now the uh, curl of my home links is a little awkward so I'm going to switch to this photocopy version of my home links so everything lays down flat. So this green triangle occupies the same space as these two white rhombuses. Okay. Now again, having these are helpful, but just knowing that this angle right here is 30 degrees will allow us to figure out the angle measurement here because I can just take the measurement from the rhombus and just write it down in the space. 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here. So my angle measurement is 30 degrees plus 30 degrees. And of course, 3 plus 3 is 6, so 3 tens plus 3 tens is going to give me 6 tens, otherwise known as 60 degrees. Okay. So then I can infer that this angle of this triangle is 60 degrees, right? So when I go and look at problem number two, where we've moved on from the rhombus to the triangles, I know that I'm looking at angles that are 60 degrees a piece, okay? So Molly fills red trapezoids large angle with angles of the green triangles. What is the measure of the red trapezoids large angle? So I have constructed a trapezoid from those three green triangles. Now I want to know what the measure of this angle is. Well, if I know that 30 plus 30 gives me 60 and this angle of this red, uh, I'm sorry, green triangle is 60 degrees, then I know that this angle is also going to be 60 degrees, even though it's pointed... Uh, kind of like at an opposite direction, okay? This is an equilateral triangle, so that means all three angles and all three sides are the same measurement. They're equal. So this angle here is 60 degrees. If I point this triangle down, it fills in the same space, so that means it's the same measure, 60 degrees. So then that means that this angle is also 60 degrees. So the angle measurement here for number two is taking the combination of 60 degrees plus 60 degrees equals what? Well, I'll let you do some of the heavy lifting there too. In reality, what I've measured up here can also be inferred for this angle measurement because if this is a measure of 30 plus 30, and this is 60 and this is 60, the angle measure here could also be represented as 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 or 3 tens plus 3 tens plus 3 tens plus 3 tens okay so that's how I find the missing angle measures using pattern blocks as long as I have a key to work off of okay uh, and I know at least one angle, I'm allowed to then figure out 
other angle measurements by relating one pattern block to another by making comparisons to what I see. Okay, so I could take this blue rhombus and compare my white rhombus to it and I can see that they occupy the same space just like they do the green triangle so I can infer that the angle here to this rhombus is probably 60 degrees as well. There's something in language translation called the Rosetta Stone. Okay, There's a popular brand of, uh, of uh, software that teaches you how to learn different languages. But a Rosetta Stone is basically like a, a key or uh, the clue that helps get you started on translating uh, language. Once you know how to translate one word or one phrase or one set of uh, uh, letters, it allows you to make connections with other words and other letters and other phrases, and it helps you eventually learn how to translate a language. Having one angle measurement is all I need to be able to find all the other angle measurements combined. Okay? Finally, let's take a look at one of these uh, multiplication problems because, you know, you're fourth graders and you should be able to multiply this stuff by now. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to pull up the bottom half of my page right here. Let's tackle number three since it's right there. 5,583, or I'm sorry, 88 times three. 5,588 times three. Well, they don't leave us a lot of space here now, do they? So I'm going to just turn my paper over. I'm going to rewrite that problem. 5,588 times 3. And there's another problem that is going to require multiple steps or multiple calculations. So I can use either partial products, I could use partitioning rectangles, I could use lattice to solve this. I think today I'm going to use partitioning rectangles just for fun. So that means I have to make a pretty long rectangle and make four parts or four boxes. Because 5,588 is 5 groups of 1,000 plus 500 plus 8 tens plus 8 ones. That's what we call expanded notation right there. And I'm going to multiply all these parts by 3. Well, 5 times 3 is 15, so that gives me 15 with 3 zeros, or 15,000. 5 times 5, or I'm sorry, 3 times 500. It's going to give me 1,500, or 15 with two zeros. 8 times 3 is 24, so 8 tens times 3 is going to be 24 tens, and I just get 24. There are my four partial products, and i got to line up all my numbers, like so. So when I go to add them, I have all my place values lined up, so then the calculations become super easy. So 16,764 is my product. 16,764. Just wanted to make sure I'm remembering that number correctly. Okay? And that's it, my friends. You can do this. You've got this. But if you don't feel like you've got it 100%, then that's when you need to talk to your math teacher. Tell them, hey, I could use a little extra help, or I need you to show me this one more time, or hey, could you make sure that my work is correct? Your teacher will be happy to help you regardless of your question, because that's why they're there. Okay, So ask those questions. Okay? I hope this uh, video was helpful for you. Uh, until we speak again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.